Yes, with that said, we are bringing you an Arne Slot Liverpool tactic. Now, there's screenshots. They apparently got a 86% win rate with Liverpool, 50 wins, 4 draws, 4 losses, 103 goal differential. It is pretty crazy. There is a video, so definitely, as always, if there's a video, check it out. It goes more in-depth of how they created it, why they created it, and little pieces about that. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of a description, just saying Arnie Slot Tactic tested at Liverpool average 58% possession and scoring 82 goals and conceding the fewest goals in the league. So we'll see how it does with our teams of, well, Liverpool, Aston Villa, and the championship side of Ipswich Town. So with all that said, let's just jump into the Premier League and see how they did. Well, Premier League looks pretty nice for Liverpool. 86 goals, so higher than the 82 that the tester had. Now, the tester did do it through a holiday, just like I'm doing it here. They also tried it with Feyenoord. 71% uh, win rate, 30, uh, sorry, 24 wins, 4 draws, and 6 losses. Only 48 goal differential, though. But uh, we got 79 points. is a little bit low for our Liverpool squad. In the, all the tactics that we've been testing, usually it's about 85. But Aston Villa in 8th is a bit low. 61 is about 15 points lower than usual. 61 goals. I definitely worked for Liverpool a lot better than Aston Villa. Well, unfortunately, in the Domestic Cups, Carabao Cup third round, you're out immediately in penalties to Tottenham, interestingly enough. But you get to the FA Cup final and you have a doozy of an extra time. Three goals, winning 5-2 to two against Leicester. And might as well make it a third trophy of the season, the Europa League final, one all in penalties over Roma. So overall, I mean, Premier League, fantastic. 79 points, one point above Manchester United. It could just be a downturn for the Premier League. But you win the Europa League in penalties. You win the FA Cup in extra time. It took you a little longer to get to these cups, but still, you got them. A three-trophy season is pretty nice. Care about Cup? Yeah, that was pretty bad. Squad-wise, good amount of green there. 23 goals for Nunez, 19 for Salah, not too bad. Assists 15 for Luis Diaz, Salah with 14, 13 for McAllister, Trent and Robertson all the way down with 12 and 11 apiece. Uh, and then Salah, of course, with a 7-4 nil. Well, Aston Villa, I just missed that completely. Lost to Liverpool, nil three in the FA Cup fourth round. But Carabao Cup, you do get to the final. Unfortunately, you're not able to get past Arsenal, nil one. However, you do get a trophy, Europa Conference League final, 2 nil over Slavia Prague. And you do beat Fiorentina, our old foes. So competition-wise, Premier League is not great. Eighth place, their uh, media prediction is 10th or thereabouts, so not the greatest right here. They do get Europa League next season by winning the Conference League, so fantastic there. At least you're getting some money out of that. FA Cup, not great. Runners-up of the Carabao Cup, not too bad. Overall, you have five in the green. But goals, 14 for Zaniolo is the tops, interestingly enough. Assists, 13 for McGinn is top, and only one in the double digits. And then average rating, Emilio Buendia with only four appearances, but Lucas Dinier with his 7-10. Data hub for Liverpool, not dribbling, pretty much though attacking-minded. Uh, goals is down than you would expect. I mean, you'd expect definitely through the roof, at least for a top-level team, or a top-of-the-table team. Goals per game, 2.26, 0.79 more than the average, 0.66 conceded, and a 0.74 XG against. Aston Villa really far down in the attacking numbers, sadly, so they didn't do very well. Uh, goals per game, 1.61 is definitely down from their average. 1.18 conceded is actually down from their average, which is not too bad. XG against the 1.32. Premier League stats-wise, Liverpool with 2.08 points per game. That is definitely down from where we usually see it, up with at least 2.2 or thereabouts. Aston Villa all the way in the bottom of the list, but they do make the list. 1.61 points per game. Most goals, Liverpool in first with 86. Aston Villa with 61 in seventh. Few shots against Liverpool in second with 242. Aston Villa in eighth with 367. Most possession, 59 to 54%. Uh, most dribbles made, Liverpool making the list 605. Best pass completion, 89% for Liverpool. Aston Villa with 88. And most shots for Liverpool in first with 628. Aston Villa in fourth with 530. Well, as we switch things over to Ipswich Town in the championship, fourth place, 96 points, four points off of second. That is hard. 93 goals. I mean, you're 
clearly kicked Southampton's butt, but still you're not getting up into the hundreds where you generally are. And where did they lose out? They lost out in the semifinals 4-4 in penalties on aggregate against Middlesbrough. Domestic Cups out in the Carabao Cup fourth round against Arsenal. Only nil one, so pretty nicely done there. But FA Cup fourth round replay against Arsenal. Again, 1-2 in extra time. You really just were so close. Sarmiento sent off in the 88th. That kind of hurts. So overall championship, not bad fourth place. I mean, average in the last couple of weeks has been first or second. So I'll take fourth place. They don't get promoted, unfortunately. Not able to get through playoffs. They usually aren't in this in all the saves that I've been doing. But FA Cup, Carabao Cup, eh, not too bad. Squad-wise, they do get more green than Aston Villa did. But 12 goals is tops for Connor Chaplin. And you get George Hurst all the way down with 16 appearances off the bench with only a single goal. Assist Jack Taylor with 12. Leaf Davis with 11, who does stick around all season. And then Christian Walton with 7 plus 1 appearances, 7 3 6, but Leaf Davis with a 7 2 3. Championship level stats Ipswich in third with two flat points per game. Most goals in fourth with 97. Fewest shots against in second with 333. Most possession in fifth with 56%. Most dribbles made in seventh with 760. There is most tackles won in fourth with 1072. Best pass completion in seventh with 89% and then most shots for in third with 691. So let us take a look at Arne Slot's 4-3-3. You start out with a sweeper keeper in support, fullback on the left in support, an inverted wingback in support on the right, ball playing defenders in the central spots, a deep line playmaker in defend, a Mazala in attack on the midfield line next to a box to box in support, an inside forward in attack on the left and a winger in attack on the right, and then a deep line forward in attack up front. Positive mentality in possession. You have passing directness is shorter, tempo is higher, and mixed crosses. In transition, counter press, counter distribute quickly, distribute to the center backs, and take short kicks. And then out of possession, a high press line of engagement, a higher defensive line, trigger press much more often, prevent your goalkeeper distribution, and get stuck in. So, how did it do for our three teams? I mean, to be honest, I can't say it did a bad job. Uh, again, this is a full holiday. I am not taking control of any matches. If you took control of the matches yourself, did your own match shouts, transfers, training, things like that, you could probably do a lot better. Getting Ipswich Town hopefully into those one and two spots, not too bad. Uh, Liverpool got first. I mean, it's hard to beat that. It was a downturn. 79 points at the top is not a high, per, you know, high amount of points that we usually see. Usually it's in the 90s or thereabouts, but they still get tops. They get 86 goals to the testers, 82. So overall, for Liverpool itself, it seemed to do fairly well. Aston Villa, not so much. But uh, again, take control of this stuff. You could do a much better job, probably matching uh, and getting better of what the tester did. But that's it for me, Stephanie FM, for the Football Manager Blog channel, saying thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the Football Manager Blog on Facebook, as well as the website, where you can talk about and get a lot more information on Football Manager goodness. But that's it for me. Take care and enjoy.